Gurumizanga Gwewe Komu Tukufu Gagwewe Ka Uwama Nyinga Gwani Dejitiwa Lord, we open our hearts to you. We open our minds to you that you may reign free. Oh, Holy Spirit, reign free. Reign free in our lives. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill each heart. Let your glory fill each mind, O oh Lord, as you are exalted.
was dead and now is alive and is living forevermore. The one in whom the keys of death and Hades are in your hands. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, before we get into the, the, the sharing of God's word, I wanted us to pray. To pray, I'm, I'm going to read the scripture, James chapter 5, verse 13. It says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let, let them pray. Another scripture in Matthew says, it says, another scripture in the book of Matthew says, that when we come together in the name of Jesus, he comes into the midst of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is here. I say Jesus is here. He's in our midst. We came together in his name. He's in our midst. And the Bible says when you are together like that, and you agree as touching anything you ask of the Father in heaven, it will be done for you by him. So I want us to agree in prayer about some things. We are going to pray for our brother William's uh, wife. And we are going to bind the power of darkness. And we are going to release healing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want us to pray. Let us lift up our voices and pray. Right now and call upon the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for the opportunity to gather in prayer. We are lifting up our voices before you, O oh God. We are humbling ourselves in your presence. And we ask you to move. I'm going to ask you to interpret for me, Deo, to continue to interpret as I pray. We ask you to move, O oh Lord, our God, on behalf of our brother William and of his wife, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you promised us. You said when we gather in your name, you will come in the midst of us. You said whatsoever we bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth, it shall be loosed in heaven. Now in the name of Jesus, we bind the power of darkness that has come against him, that has come against his wife, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. we bind that infirmity, we bind that sickness, we bind that pain, in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we release your healing power. Your word says you'd send your word and you heal our diseases. We send your word to her body in the name of Jesus. We speak that by your stripes she was healed. By the stripes of Jesus she was healed. We command her vessels to be healed. We command her nerves to be healed. We command her muscles to be healed. We command her entire her body to be healed from the top of her head to the soles of her feet in the name of Jesus. Now I want us to continue in prayer. Continue to pray concerning any trouble that is before you. The Bible says if any man is in trouble, let him pray. Meaning God will answer prayer. Father, we are calling upon your name. I want you to hold your neighbor's hand and just pray for them that if there be any trouble that they are faced with, that God will arise and fight their battle. That he will rise and fight their battle. Now you lift up your voice and pray. 
Hallelujah, Lord our God. Yes. Hallelujah to you, our Father. We lift up your name. You are our help, O oh God. The one who helps us in times of trouble. The one whom you said, call upon me in the day of trouble. And I will deliver you. And you will glorify my name. Father, we lift up any who are troubled among us. We pray, O oh Lord, that your power will go forth will free them from trouble. Whatever kind of trouble it is, Lord, it may be decisions they need to make and they are troubled in their minds. We pray in the name of Jesus. Let wisdom come. Let light come. Let guidance come in the name of Jesus. Father, it may be financial trouble. We pray that you will provide that your resources will be opened to them in the name of Jesus. Father, it may be infirmity or sickness. We rebuke sickness. We rebuke infirmity. We rebuke disease in the name of Jesus. In this congregation, we proclaim that the power of God is available to heal. So we speak to sickness. We command you in Jesus Depart. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We speak to bad dreams. We command them to leave. We command headaches to leave. In the name of Jesus. We command restlessness. In the name of Jesus. Leave this place. Leave the people of God. Get out and go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It may be marriage troubles. We speak in Jesus' name. Peace to every marriage. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It may be wayward children who are have gone away from God. We call them back. We call them back in the name of Jesus. We call them back to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Lord, we release your power to do these things, to do these things, to do more, to do exceedingly, to do abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amina. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amina. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, the Bible says in the book of Judges that after the days of Joshua, there arose a generation that did not know how to fight. And God said, because this generation doesn't know how to fight, I am going to leave enemies in their promised land so that I may teach them how to fight. There are things that God wants you to learn. There are things that God wants me to learn. And sometimes because we are so comfortable, we are unwilling or we are not not ready to learn. So sometimes God will allow troubles. He'll allow circumstances. He'll allow enemies to stand before us. But not that we may be defeated. Praise the Lord. I say not that we may be defeated. 
Your enemies are not there so that you may be defeated. I'm saying God has already given you the victory. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Amen. If I were you, I would praise God for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Your enemies are not there so that you may be defeated. Your enemies are before you. The troubles that you face are before you. So that your hands may be trained for battle. And your fingers may be trained for war. The psalmist says, Blessed be the Lord my God who trains my hands for battle and teaches my fingers to war. Tell your neighbor, God wants to teach you how to fight. Tell your neighbor, God wants to teach you how to fight. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know some people don't like that news. I said God wants to teach you how to fight. Tell your neighbor, God wants to teach you how to fight. Blessed be the Lord my God who teaches my hands to battle and who trains my fingers for war. I want you to raise your hand. Raise up your hands and repeat those words in Luganda. Blessed be the Lord my God. Who teaches my hands to war? People don't know what to do. Okay, let me show you. Keep, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Some people are already tired. One day Moses. <laughs> One day Moses was with the people of Israel. And the Amalekites came to stand against them. I said some people are already tired. Keep your hands up. <laughs> I'm not trying to punish you. you. <laughs> but God told Moses. He said raise your hands up. Because every time your hands are up. I am going to rise up. And I'm going to fight your enemies for you. And then every time his hands would go down. The Amalekites would win over the Israelites. Now. I'm going to say the words in English. You wait for him to say them in Luganda. Then you repeat them. Blessed be the Lord my God. Who teaches my hands to war? And my fingers to battle. Say it again. Blessed be the Lord my God. Who teaches my hands to war? My, my battle, my talo. hands to battle. And my fingers to war. You can lower your hands. Now, do you know the value of raising up your hands? Hallelujah. Moses raised up his hands. And whenever he raised up his hands, God rose up on behalf of Israel and he fought. In the New Testament, the Bible teaches, it says, I urge that men lift up holy hands everywhere in prayer without wrath and doubting. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, I urge that people, they raise up their hands. Holy hands. So the hands need to be holy hands. Not hands which have been involved in wickedness. But raising up holy hands. And in faith, they are praying to God. And when they pray to God lifting up holy hands, it is like God is saying, the way I was with Moses, when they were fighting against the Amalekites. I am also with you. And I'm fighting your battles. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That wasn't the focus of my sermon. But I just felt that the Lord wanted to tell somebody that. The troubles you are facing. The battles that you seem to be fighting. God may have allowed some enemies. To remain. 
okusigala in your place of inheritance mu kifoche cyo buskabu so that he may teach you to fight asuro kwigiriza okurana are you ready to fight wetegese okurana i said are you ready to fight wetegese okurana some people don't seem to be ready to fight are you ready to fight wetegese okurana hallelujah amina are you ready to fight? Wetege sokurana. Are you ready to possess what God has prepared? Wetege sokutwale chimu kama cha kutekedde. Let me tell you something. Kambeko chekugamba. The enemy is not going to give it up easily. Omulabe takenda kumalaga wanika. He's going to try to fight. Again ageza kokurana. He's going to try to fight. Again ageza kokurana. You think that when Joshua was coming into the promised land? Rosa Joshua yali ajja munse nsubize to possess those places where the bible says they were giants bible and it says that they had cities whose walls were extending almost up i don't know how they said but up to heaven the walls were so high like jericho you think that the people are just going to say okay it's okay you you just come in and take the city is that what they did I'm asking is that what they did? Did they just give up the city of Jericho? They didn't just give it up. So the enemy is going to try to hold on to that which God has prepared for you. But I want you to know God trains your hands for battle. And he trains your fingers for war. And the God who goes before you, he fights battles. And he wins them all. I said he wins them all. He wins them all. You will possess your inheritance. You will enter the place of your inheritance. In Jesus' name. I said you will enter the place of your inheritance. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Don't let him talk you out of it. We've been sharing on this on the theme scripture Arise Shine. And I want to finish the last the last in the series I think there were four sermons that the Lord put on my heart. And and that's what we are going to focus on in the next maybe 30 minutes. Praise the Lord. We are still talking on arise shine. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Isaiah kaga nyorsoka. It says arise shine. Golokoka yaka. Tell your neighbor arise shine. Gamba kulira nye golokoka yaka. Golokoka yaka. I don't hear the church today. Say arise shine. Golokoka yaka. Golokoka yaka. You see, the reason why I many times ask you to repeat these things, many times when we emphasize something or repeat it, it, it stays in our mind. It is, it is a way of provoking us to meditate on it. Arise, yaka. For your light has come. When is the light coming? When is it coming? <laughs> it has come. Hallelujah. Amen. Your light has come. And the glory of God is risen upon you. Are there any believers in this word? Your light has come. And the glory of God is risen upon you. You know, sometimes because of circumstances, we tend to waver in faith concerning the promises of God. But Abraham, the Bible says, he did not waver in faith. 
concerning the promises of God. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. When we hold up in faith, God is glorified. I said, when we hold up in faith, God is glorified. How many people want to glorify God in their lives? I want to glorify God in their lives. And God is saying, when you get strong in faith, when you hold firmly to the faith that you profess or you confess, then God is glorified. Because Abraham did not waver in faith. But the Bible says he was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm saying again, arise, shine. For your light has come. And the glory of God is risen upon you. Hallelujah. Amen. It says thick darkness will cover darkness will cover the earth. And thick darkness will cover the people. But upon you, the light of God will rise. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you seeing darkness covering the earth? Are you seeing darkness covering the earth? Are you seeing thick darkness around us? You're seeing people shooting each other. Have you heard about that news this week? Is that darkness? That is darkness. Darkness will cover the earth. You have heard about so many things, isn't it? Even last night, I think, I've heard about some assassination. In the darkness will cover the earth. Thick darkness will cover the people. Which is, which is a big problem. But God is saying, upon you. Upon you. Hallelujah. Amen. I said upon you, upon you, the light of God will rise. The light of God will rise. The light of God will rise. In the name of Jesus, may the light of God rise upon your life. May it rise upon your life. Even in a world which gets darker and darker, the Bible says you are the light of the world. You are a city set on a hill. You cannot light a lamp and hide it under the bush. That is why I'm unashamed about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because it is the power of God for our salvation in the midst of darkness. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The gospel of the Lord Jesus is our light, is our defense, is our help, is our protection, is our provision, is our sustenance in the midst of a dark world. Upon you, the light of God will rise. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? So we talked about God's promise. We talked about God's command. Actually, we started with God's command. We talked about God's promise. Then we talked about our transformation. Because we must be changed in order to reflect the light of God which is coming upon us. And then we began to speak on our response. Our response. And the first one under our response was repentance turning around and giving no room to Satan or to the flesh 
to satisfy its desires. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you're here and you are under the conviction of the Holy Spirit about any particular sin or upon about any particular disobedience, there is a scripture in the book of 2 Corinthians which God wants you to know. Let us first turn there. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm just refreshing our minds on what we shared before. And then I will touch on two other areas under our response. Verse 3. 2 Corinthians. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3. Corinthians yes. chapter 10 verse 3. Yes. You want to read it from verse 3 to verse 6. Kubanga ne wanku badde nga tutambulira mu biri. Tetulwana kugobereranga mu biri. Kubanga ebyo kuranyisa byaffe, ebyo kuranyisa byentalo zaffe, si bya mu biri, ne bya amanyi eri katonda olwo kumenya ebigo. Nga tumenya empaka na buli kintu ekigulumivu eche kulumba zizza eche kulu Echikulumba zibwa okulwana nokutegera kwa katonda era nga tujeemulula era nga tujeemula buli kilo wozo okulira Kristo era nga twetese tese okuwalana ne gwanga kubutagonda bonna okugonda kwa mwe bwe kutu bwe Praise the Lord. I will start with verse 6, the last one you've read. It says we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. In other words, when we are obedient, we open a door for God to punish all disobedience. To overcome all evil around us. Praise the Lord. Are you listening? When our obedience to God is complete, then God says it is now possible for us to punish all disobedience. So that is why the first response to God must be repentance. Before we go to the battle, we've been talking about God teaching our hands to war. But you cannot go to fight when sin is in your camp. In the book of Joshua, there was a man called Achan. Joshua chapter 7. He went into Jericho along with everybody else. But God had given them an instruction and had said, when you enter Jericho, do not take anything from Jericho because it is the very first city that you are entering into. And God consecrated everything that was the first. Meaning, it belonged to him. And no one else should touch it. Because that was a way of saying to God, You are our number one. We honor you. So it was a matter of honor. Praise the Lord. I said it was a matter of honor. So God said to them, Don't touch anything from Jericho. There is a lot of things that I am preparing. In fact, I have prepared the whole promised land before you. A land flowing with milk and honey. A land of abundant blessing. But when you enter Jericho, do not touch anything else. In there, leave it to me. Consecrate it to me. But the man Akan became greedy. Not realizing that God had so much more in store for him. And so he decided to get a few bars of gold. And a few nice looking robes. And he took them with him quietly. Hid them in his tent. 
the next the next time they were going out to battle they went to a very small town but when they reached that small town this mighty army now which had a lot of morale <laughs> sometimes we, 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 we shout a lot <laughs> we go we go we go we go that is how the army was. Very excited. We go, we go. We are going to conquer. I we go. When they reached there, they are just conquered Jericho. Isn't it? Had they just conquered Jericho? Jericho was a huge city. But when they reached there, they were beaten flat. The enemy beat them flat. Beat them flat. Why? Rachi. You will be ready to punish all disobedience. Once your obedience is complete. Hello? Amina. Hello? Amina. Are you there? Are we there? Jetuli. So they had to deal with sin in their country. And that is why God says to us, our first response is the response of repentance. Much as he is preparing you for victories, much as he has prepared a place of inheritance for you, the first place of response to God is repentance. Now I'm going to talk about the second one. Faith. If you're writing, you can write down faith. Hallelujah. Amina. Hallelujah. Amina. You see, in this scripture which we've read, just read in, in the book of 2 Corinthians 10, it says, though the weapons, though, though we are in a battle, and we are living in this world, which is now a dark world, with increasing darkness, he says, the way we fight is not carnal. It is not by physical weapons. You can't say now, the best way to defend myself is let me also get a gun and be ready. In case they come, I pull out mine. That is fighting in the flesh. I say that is fighting in the flesh. Praise the Lord. Or you say, this one knows how to argue. Let me go and train myself how to debate better than him or better than her so that I can do better and beat them at this. He says no. The weapons we use when we fight, they are spiritual weapons. And God shows us that armory in the book of Ephesians. Chapter 6. And you can write it down, but we are not going to go there. But from verse 10 going downwards, Ephesians 6 from verse 10 going down, it shows you all the weapons of our warfare. But he says, these weapons here, they are mighty through God. For doing what? What do they do? He says, we demolish arguments. And, and every pretension that, it, that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And he says, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. The third response which I will talk about is obedience. But before you get to obedience, there is a certain place of battle. It is in dealing with arguments. It deals with negative arguments. Things that 
contend against the knowledge of God. Or against God's instruction. God says, arise, shine. For your light has come. And the glory of God is risen upon you. And then the devil says, but look at your house. Things are so bad. That is an argument. Hello? Amen. Hello? Are you with me? Are you with me? That is an argument. Something is arguing with what God is saying. God says, upon you the light of God will rise. And the devil says, but you look at your bank account. Things are so bad. There is nothing there. What light is shining? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Are you with me? He asks, what light is shining? <laughs> what light? But some people will say, that it is now so dry. <laughs> the sun is shining too much in the account. That the money is totally finished. <laughs> there is nothing there. These are arguments. Are you following me? God says, I'm rising upon you with light. And the devil says, I have brought sickness. There is going to be pain in your body. You feel it. You feel it. Are you feeling that joy? It's bad. So painful. Arguments. Hello? Hello? God says, I will save you and your entire family. And that, is, and that is when your husband becomes more rough. Starts beating you. Starts, maybe he wasn't doing that before. What is Satan trying to do? Raise an argument. Are you following me? Are we together? Brethren, are we together? I want you to help me and respond. Are we together? Yeah, that's how the devil raises arguments. Actually, let me tell you about a time of argument. In the book of Exodus, God sent Moses and said to him, go into, e into Egypt and bring out my people because I've been hearing their cry and the time has come that I am coming down to deliver them. And when he said that, Moses got up Probably in a lot of doubt, fear and wondering whether it's going to be possible. Because I want you to imagine it had been 400 years. Do we have anybody who is 100 years old here? Anybody of 100 years? <laughs> uh -huh, there's no one. <laughs> but these people, it had been 400 years. When they are slaves. And then God is saying, and this is where faith is tested. God is saying, I have come down and I have come to deliver you from your oppressors. And Moses comes, the one who used to be a prince. Now he's even old. He's moving with a stick. He has no authority in Egypt. And then he comes and he says, God spoke to me. And he said that the time of your deliverance has come. And these people looked at him. I know I'm seeing some faces which are looking at me in the same way today. Praise the Lord. No, I'm not saying that you are, you are like the people of Israel. The, the people of Israel are not here. <laughs> they are not <laughs> in this congregation today. <laughs> but they looked at him. <laughs> and they said, sure. <laughs> you mean God is coming to deliver us. <laughs> and he said, God has sent me. <laughs> he went to Pharaoh. <laughs> and he started fighting with Pharaoh. <laughs> He's fighting 
with spiritual battles and ah, spiritual weapons. Ram, he's he's attacking the enemy. enemy. And he's saying you must let God's people go. When he does that, what happens? Pharaoh says, hey, you have come to deliver them. Okay. Now, call for me my, my slave. My, my, I mean my, my servants. Now those, those Israelites, it seems they have become idle and disordered. Really? No, they, they have become idle. They, 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 are like, they seem they just keep sitting around and then, then they start getting this imagination <laughs> that God is going to deliver them. Now that they are very idle, let us increase their work. What we used to give them for making bricks, let us now not give it to them. Let them go. <laughs> Find it. And make the same quantity of bricks that they were making before. That is my instruction. And kings rule by instruction. He set his instruction and kept quiet. Praise the Lord. This is argument. God says, I have come to deliver. You. And Pharaoh says, let us make their work ten times harder. I want you to realize and know your enemy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is the kind of enemy we are dealing with. But he fights with us in the place of our imagination. In the place of our thoughts. Are you following me? Are you following me? Are you following me? He fights with us in the place of our imagination and in the place of our thoughts. And he says to you, that word is not true. What God has said won't come to pass. In fact, he even makes it more difficult. But blessed be God who teaches my hands to battle and my fingers to war. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, blessed be the Lord our God who teaches our hands to battle and teaches our fingers to war. Who helps us to overcome our enemy? How does he help us to overcome our enemy? He's saying to us, your victory is in my armor. Take up the shield of faith so that you may be able to quench every fiery dart of the enemy. Hallelujah. I said so that you may be able to quench every argument that the devil shoots you. Hallelujah. Amen. When he says it is not going to be so, you say back to the devil, he said it. He said it. He said it. He said it. And I believe it. He said it. And I believe it. He said it. And I believe it. And, believe it. and my light has has come and the glory of God is rising upon my life and my family will not remain the same and we shall be delivered from the pangs of death and we shall be delivered from sickness and we shall be delivered from every power of darkness. He says to you, I have given you authority. Who gave the authority? The one who holds all authority in heaven and on earth and under the earth. He's the one who gave authority. He says, I give authority to you to trample on snakes and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Did you hear that one? I, I always say that scripture. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Bullets can fly if they want everywhere, but they shall not hurt you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you hear me? Yes. We must respond to God in faith. 
This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus. Faith in the eternal word of God. Faith in the eternal word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, friends, I'm actually going to close because it is time. But take this. Any man who will live to enter the inheritance that is theirs, they will enter it by faith in the word of God. Only by faith in the word of God. Against every argument, against every thought that contends with God's word. The only people who will enter that inheritance will enter it by faith in the eternal word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Finally, you see obedience. Number three is obedience. Obedience is born of faith. In fact, when you see someone not obeying, just know that they don't believe. Hello? Hello? Mm. If you see someone not obeying, just know they don't believe. Because once you believe God, you do what he says. The Bible says of Abraham, Abraham believed God. And then when God spoke to him, said to him, take your son, bring him to this mountain, lay him on the altar, raise your knife, sacrifice him to me. What? But the Bible says of Abraham, because he believed God, he did what God said. The Bible says we have been called to the obedience of faith. The obedience of faith. The obedience of faith. So when you begin to struggle. And, and this has been true for me in my life. Whenever I found myself struggling to obey God on a matter, when I go to examine what is happening there, I realize I've not accepted his word about the matter. And that is why I'm struggling. But the moment I accept his word about the matter, I find I have strength. Why? Because when the word of God enters in, it brings light. It brings understanding. And it brings the capacity to obey God. It brings a willingness in your heart to obey the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us work on believing God's word. Let me show you an example. If I believe that my God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ. When he gives me an instruction and he says, bring the whole tithe into the house of God and test me and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour down a blessing too much for you to contain. If I believe his word that he will do what he says he will do, I will go and get the whole tithe and I will bring it into the house of God. And I will say this is God's money. It is not my money. I am not going to take it. But when I doubt that God will do what he says, what do I do? 
I take some of the time. I bring a bit. And I say, but the other one, I still have this and this that I'm calculating. That I need to do. Are you following me? Do you see a very real example? If I believe the word of God, fully believe it, then obedience just comes. Hello? Are you there? Are you there? Yes. So God is saying to us, I want you to respond in three ways. Repentance. Faith. And obedience. And that obedience will be born of Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we wind up, I want to challenge us, friends. Let us go back to this word of God. Let us go back to this word of God. And let us read it. And let us meditate on it. Let us think upon it. Let us pray over it. And say, God, you have said to us that our glory is rising upon us. That your light is coming over us. Lord, I am one of those who is going to partake of your promise. I am determined to partake of your promise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And contend with those arguments. Fight with them. Lift up the word of God against them. Say he has promised. He will never fail me. I said he will never fail you. He will never fail you. I said he will never fail you. He will not fail you. Says those who put their trust in God will never be disappointed. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us rise up on our feet. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Let us rise up on our feet. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we magnify your name. Lord, we lift up your great name. In fact, Lord, you have exalted your word. High above your name. You have established it in the heavens. So that it will never change. Things on the earth, they pass away. They perish. They spoil. They grow old. They wear out. They tear apart. But Lord, your word, you have settled it forever in heaven, meaning it will never fail. It will never change. It is eternal. It remains forever. Lord our God, we put our faith in your eternal word. We put our faith in your eternal word concerning your people concerning deliverance church concerning our individual lives you have said to us arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of God is risen upon you Lord we put our faith in you your light rises over us your light rises over us your glory rises over your church in the midst of darkness we put our faith in your word in your eternal word which never fails which never fails which never fails which never fails Father I pray for my brethren as I pray for myself your word said about Peter that the enemy asked for him that he may sift him like wheat. But you said, I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. Father, I pray for my brethren as I pray for myself. May our faith not fail. May our faith not fail. May our faith not fail. I want you to open your mouth and ask God. 
Just talk to the Lord right now. That your faith will not fail. That your brother's faith will not fail. Pray for your neighbor. If you want to hold their hand and pray that their faith will not fail. In the midst of a dark world where they are faced with troubles that their faith will not fail. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for that brother. Pray for that sister. Like the way the Lord Jesus prayed for Peter. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, O God. Because our faith is in you. You are the author and also the perfecter of our faith. You are the author and the perfecter of our faith. We take a hold of your word. We take a hold of your word. Lord, we give you praise. The Lord, we want to repent before you where we've not obeyed your word. Where we've taken that which is yours. Where we've not consecrated our lives. For the day of battle. The Lord, you will have mercy upon us. The Lord, you will have mercy upon each individual. Who is calling upon your name. Lord, that you will have mercy. And you will remove the burden of sin and the burden of guilt from our shoulders, O oh God. And you release us into the path of obedience, of complete obedience to the Lord Jesus, so that you may be glorified in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God.